We're here at Climate Day, where we just heard a panel of investors speak about how to get your company or your startup funded. So one of the questions asked is, what do these investors look for? In the world of climate tech, clean tech, or ESG, the most important comes down, of course, to unit economics. What does that mean? Being profitable, having a good product or service that's in demand, that you can generate returns both for the planet, but also for investors. Better for you and better for the planet is ultimately what leads good companies to grow in this space. Another thing that these investors mentioned is scalability and distribution. That means how large of an impact and how many people can you get your product, service, or business in front of? And that includes the more people that you can help, the more businesses. Uh, we heard on the panel from Patagonia about how they aren't even looking at D2C companies or B2C companies, but thinking in an even bigger picture about how do you get your technology in the hands of people around the world. And so these investors are also looking for velocity. So that means how quickly is your company growing and how in demand is your uh, climate tech company being in the right place at the right time and really leveraging this big push that we're seeing in the world of climate tech, uh, carbon removal, which is one of the big um, you know, negative factors that's affecting the world that we live in today. Also that these investors mentioned is what's called the environmental matrix. And so that includes everything from your packaging, um, that includes using best practices for sustainability, and that includes everything from workers' rights, having a supply chain that is renewable, that is also regenerative. Uh, that means that uh, you're able to source your product in a more sustainable way that is also better for economics because you're less dependent on your supply chain when you do have one that's regenerative. Uh, also, these investors talk about biodiversity and how it's better for the planet. And overall, it was a great panel. And you can see that there's a lot of activity going on here about the world of climate tech, clean tech, and ESG. This is actually at the Natural Products Expo. And this was hosted by the Climate Collaborative. If you need help and you have a business that is in the climate tech, clean tech, or ESG space, please contact us at CrowdCreates. We are full service marketing strategic advisory. If you have a climate tech, clean tech, or ESG project, please contact us at CrowdCreate. We're full service marketing and strategic advisory. We'd love to be able to help you grow, get you connected to people like this, and overall uh, put in some new marketing strategic initiatives to help your company get exposure and help the world be a better place. Thanks. We're looking at velocity, we're looking at doors and distributions, all those typical things, unit economics and margins are critical to long-term financial health. Um, and then we have an environmental impact matrix that we use, or that the provisions team uses to think about suppliers as well. And, and there it's questions around uh, worker rights. Does this supplier or, or partner contribute to biodiversity? Are they using the best possible packaging given the state of sort of the packaging space in the US and some of those challenges that many of us are probably familiar with? Um, and so we look at a lot of those. And I think going back to the economics piece, one thing that I want to underscore are kind of a, a top line and a bottom line note that we're seeing in this regenerative space. Regenerative, better for you, better for the planet brands tend to be growing faster. Um, and so we're seeing that in a top line growth perspective from a unit economics angle. And then on the bottom line, we're seeing that regenerative supply chains are more resilient to economic shock. They tend to have lower input costs. And all of that comes back to a conversation around economic health uh, for those companies. And so we look at all of those different things. We do try to make some of those connections. Michael? Agreed. Um, so I think one, we, we've been in B Corp since 2018, 
Um, so 2008, sorry, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 extra years here, a couple recertifications that I skipped over. Um, so we always like to see that. It's a, it's a nice metric. Obviously, I'd say probably half the companies we work with are, are B Corp certified. Um, I think it might be helpful. I'll, two examples of actual companies we have worked with that I think are, kind of give some feel for what we look for. One is Vital Farms. Um, we worked with them over about a five year period, helped do four different transactions. Pre IPO, which they had about two years ago, there were eight outside investors, and we've introduced six of those eight. And so, one of the reasons we liked them, one, obviously, I think they were the fastest growing food company in the 5,000 for like three or four years consecutively. Obviously, it's a really unbelievable growth. And I think for us also, animal welfare. And you need to say, well, what does that have to do with climate? Um, so, I think I've, you know, one of the, I guess it's just an assumption or belief is that um, in the West, we typically kind of see nature as um, ours to use. You know, it, it has been put here for our use and, and we really don't, um, so it's in that way we can use it however way we'd like to. Versus, I think one of the things Vital brings with our animal welfare is this kind of one step that, you know, we are dependent on the things, the life around us. And it's one step away from that kind of dualism of us being above nature. And so we like that aspect of it. It kind of like, it starts to kind of get to. I is corporate venture and corporate development team. Um, so we were uh, involved, really excited to hear Julia share the great news this morning about acquisition of hot crackers. Um, my day-to-day -day is mostly on the venture side, and within that, um, we invest across three thematic areas that are relevant to our core businesses. The first is accelerating the transition to regenerative ag. The second is around biodiversity. And the last is perhaps what you would have expected from Patagonia, um, apparel innovation. So we're gonna go back to the regen ag since we're at a food and fed event here. Um, within that, we're a pretty small, uh, amount of capital relative to the capital that's flowing more broadly in the market. And so we made a very explicit decision not to back uh, consumer brands, so CPG brands, et cetera, um, in part because we think there is a greater opportunity to be catalytic by focusing on what are those systemic barriers to the broader adoption of regenerative so that hopefully in five or 10 years we have it backed one or two or three brands, but we have created a system that enables hundreds, two hundreds, three hundreds of brands. Um, so that's part of our focus. We're pretty early stage seed in Series A. Um, and we really believe in this sort of catalytic systemic approach to thinking about what are those barriers that if we can smooth that path, if we can help finance the transition, not directly, but the investment in companies who are, are solving that problem, or if we can help us move away from purely conversations around yield to thinking about nutrient density and, and what are those connections between regenerative ag and better for you food. Um, those are the types of things that we're really looking to, to back. That's great. Listening to your response, it also makes me. Um, I think there, you know, obviously, there's that risk of the carbon tunnel vision, but I do think at this point in time, you know, given kind of the data that we have and the tools that we have, that keeping it very simple of asking the question, what does the company's products or services, you know, how does it affect climate? And you know, obviously, um, I mean, I, I think the climate is probably the penultimate multivariable <laughs> issue. Um, but I think we all, you know, science has kind of told us that you know, CO2 is the main protagonist you know, at this point. And so really to focus in on that and to look for both um, risks and opportunities on a record climate story. Where those might be um, you know, the emissions that could be you know, higher than incumbents. But really to quantify, but look at it both from a, a risk and an opportunity standpoint. And I think that's what, what we look for when we you know, are talking to a company. Um, so I think that's probably our, the best fit. I think the other piece would be to look at the scope one, two, three emissions. And I think that's a great framework to look at when you're talking about CO2 emissions and making sure that you're capturing it. I think that's a, a really good framework. And I think the third piece would be, you know, to the point of, of tunnel vision is to back out and kind of talk about what other 
the larger impacts the company can have that aren't measured by, by in a carbon. Okay, I'm looking at the spot. Not on the script. So if I'm at the pitch slam on Wednesday, what's the one question that if I'm a judge that I should be asking? From pitch pitch session? Yeah. Um I would have to say, um, you know, what is your I mean, obviously we always kind of unit economics at some level is kind of like a is a base sometimes will get sloughed over, but there's a lot that is captured in that kind of one you know, whether it be if it's a restaurant, same store sales, but if it's a product, you know, unit economics. Great, thank you. So Scott, at SSF, you integrate measurements of impact with financial accounting. How does this approach? It's going to be better set up for success, some of the, the points that Scott was making earlier to that effect. Um, and, and, you know, the second thing I'll say is at Patagonia at Tinch Adventures, um, we won't invest in the company unless there is a clear environmental story to what is going to happen. Um, so we've taken that off the board, but we actually believe that in doing so, we can achieve some really great returns, drive some really incredible climate impact in the, in the process. Um, so uh, I hear you, but I, I don't think it necessarily always means it's, it's lower profitability. Yeah, that was, that's... Great, thank you.